today we have a special treat for all you coffee lovers out there. We're joined by the owner of Detroit Sip. This is the perfect show to watch as you sit at home gearing up for your Saturday morning. So if you're like me and you can't function without that daily dose of Java, you won't want to miss this episode. We'll be chatting with the mastermind behind Detroit Sip and finding out what makes their coffee so delicious. Plus, we might just learn a thing or two about the art of brewing that perfect cup. You sit back, relax, grab your coffee, get ready to sip on some knowledge. This is Celebrate Michigan, the show produced on the campus of Madonna University. I'm Chris Benson, and today we're welcoming Giovanna Fudge, the owner of Detroit Sip, to the show. Thanks for coming to the show today. Thank you for having me. So we want to get right into it. Um, how did Detroit Sip come to be? Literally was a dream. I wanted to win the lotto and then put a coffee shop in my neighborhood um, because it is literally close to two colleges and that was my dream to be able to give the college students a place to go where they could be amongst us, the residents, because we're all one community, but we didn't know each other because we had no reason to come together. So you haven't won the lotto yet? I have not won the lotto, but I'm still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so if I come upon Detroit Sip, tell, walk me through. What's the experience? What's it gonna look, where is it? What's it gonna look on the outside? And what am I going to experience as I walk in? Well, it is on the west side of Detroit. Um, it is on West McNichols. And those of you that are familiar with the Detroit, we commonly call it Six Mile. Yep. Um, so it is on Six Mile between Livernois and Wyoming. Um, literally, I'm a west sider, born and raised in Detroit. Uh, I actually lived uh, over in that neighborhood for many, many, many years. Um, it is historically known as close to being by the Avenue of Fashion. When you see it on the outside, it looks different now than when we first started this journey um, in 2014. At the time, there was nothing else going on. And now you see so much life and everything is vibrant and the pieces are moving together. Other businesses are opening. You see flowers and you, it's, it's very welcoming. We're not quite where we want to be, but certainly not where um, we started on this journey. When you walk in, you're going to see a celebration of Detroit from the paintings on the wall, um, from the mural above your head when you're standing placing an order. Um, the names of everything, uh, everything on the menu item is named after something Detroit. It really is a celebration of not just the city itself, but the resilience of the people that, that live there and just something to give the community to celebrate. Um, the world is pretty sad now when you watch the news. Um, in Detroit, we have a lot of things going on, both the good and bad, um, but it's the commitment of the coffee shop to bring everybody together one sip at a time. What was it about coffee? There's lots of different things you could have opened, right? It mm -hmm. could have been a little sandwich place, maybe a smoothie. Seems like there's, everywhere you go, there's smoothies now. Why coffee? So I have to tell you a story. Um, my mom used to take us to a grocery store. It used to be called a and P, I I mm -hmm. believe. Yes, and I am old enough to remember a okay, and P. Okay, a and P. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so at the end of every um, register, there used to be a, a machine where you could grind the coffee. Yes. I think it was called five o'clock. It was. Okay. Red bag, gold yes. label. Yes. Yes. So. Studying for the bar, I studied inside of the coffee shop. My mom passed away my first semester mm. in college. The bar was the hardest thing I thought I was ever going to have to do. But the smell of coffee reminded me of my mother. And so I would study for the bar exam um, in the coffee shop every single day because that smell was very relaxing to me. I have another confession. I don't drink coffee. Um, I know, I know. I'm so surprised. I know. <laughs> but coffee, just like music, it just has the, the organic ability to bring people together, no matter what their race is, their gender, their economic class. Um, it just brings people together, and the smell of it, like I said, was very relaxing to me. And um, it made me feel close to my mom during one of the hardest times <laughs> I had ever experienced in my life. So with that, I wanted to bring something like that back to my, um, my neighborhood. Now there are coffee shops everywhere, but I'm going to age myself, but I have nothing to lose. Um, <laughs> so in the, I graduated from high school in 1995. There weren't coffee shops. Mm -hmm. Now they're everywhere, and, um, but they just have the ability to bring people together, and that's why mm -hmm. it's a coffee shop. 
Well, I'm going to age myself, too, and I graduated a few years before you did, and the mm -hmm. only coffee shops I remember were, like, Dunkin' Donuts, mm -hmm. and that's great, but that was never anywhere where I would ever have thought, like, I'm going to go sit with my friends, right, you yes. know, and, and hang out. Um, and, and it wouldn't be a place where I would think, like, I can go there and just kind of catch up with someone or, or connect. But it sounds like that's what you really wanted to bring to your little corner of the world. Yes. Yes, I wanted to have that space. The library for me is too quiet. Mm -hmm. The noise is so, excuse me, the silence is so loud. But there's something about that quiet buzz in the coffee mm -hmm. shop. And then you have your own little space, but you're close enough to other people. For me, it was just a, a place of calmness. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it has, the, it has done that for our community and not just Detroit Sip, coffee shops all over. It doesn't have that fast food, hurry up and get in and out. And I'm just gonna say that Starbucks, I gotta yeah. get the volume out in a quick amount of time. That's not what it is. Mm -hmm. Anyone who comes there when I happen to be behind the counter, I hope you're not in a rush because you're gonna get coffee and a conversation. <laughs> yeah, because it isn't just a hurry up and go type of um, vibe when you walk into the coffee shop. Well, and I looked at your website. I haven't been to the coffee shop yet. I will be. Okay. But um, I looked at your website. I saw that there's beautiful artwork on the walls and that I would love to hear more about. Just the whole environment of it. It did make me just want to, like, sit for a minute, you know? So talk about the how did you choose the decor and, and what does that mean to you? So the artwork, the walls are very long in mm -hmm. the coffee shop. Initially, I wanted to use artwork of Detroit Public School students. That was my initial goal because I am a Detroit Public School graduate from K through 12. Awesome. And I wanted to use that as a way to uplift and support um, because it did a lot for me and helped shape who I am today. And whenever budgets are cut, the arts seem to take the First largest thing. hit. Mm -hmm. And that was the, that was the goal. Um, I haven't yet met that goal. I haven't given up yet. But it has, um, the walls have been graced with artwork from mm -hmm. um, various places, photography. Um, we've had some photographs that were available for sale that customers have come in and purchased. Um, and we've had tons of, of rotation uh, so that children who sell their artwork get 100% of whatever the cost is that goes to the, um, the students so that it's uplifting them and just a, a small way of giving back. Oh, that's wonderful. I can't believe we have to take a break already. Um, so you go refill your coffee at home. Come right back because we're going to hear more about Detroit Step. See you soon. I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. <laughs> Maria, so how's work? It was fourth period biology. Our students just weren't getting how easily viruses spread. So Miss Bell and I had them role play a zombie virus outbreak. By the time they had all learned the lesson, all the living were dead. Hey, how's your job going? That big sales meeting I planned? Next year, I might get to go. <clears throat> cool. Life's this hard? It's no wonder 7,000 students drop out every school day. Visit BoostUp.org and help kids in your community stay in school. What to expect when you're expecting? Like you? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. 
ready for the- Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> Welcome back to Celebrate Michigan. I'm Chris Benson, and I'm here with Giovanna Fudge, owner of Detroit Sip. So you mentioned in the last segment um, that your menu items have interesting names, and I peeked at the website. Um, tell us about some of the names of, of the things that you serve um, in the store. So one of our frappes is called the Joe, and that's after uh, Mr. Joe Lewis. Love it. And uh, we have the Motown Mocha, that's after the music, uh, awesome. <laughs> after Motown. Um, Belle Isle is our light rose, so the Belle Isle Blonde. Nice. Um, we have McNichols Morning, which is the dark roast because we are on McNichols. We have Hastings Hot Chocolate. My favorite drink is I-75, the chai latte, um, named after the freeway. Um, the Americano is called Auto Americano. Everything on our menu item um, is named after something Detroit. What's the most popular item that people come in for? Is there, is there one thing that you feel like you're always making those? The Mount Carmel Macchiato. Okay. Um, named after the former hospital. Yeah. It used to yeah. be Mount Carmel. I think that's the most popular drink. But I-75 is catching up. Okay. Because there I are a lot of non-coffee drinkers um, right. that come and they patronize um, every day that we're open. Yeah. So different, and, and you know, for the uh, uh, uninitiated, I guess I should say, you know, if, if you're not looking for coffee, if coffee's too heavy, what, what might they order if, they, if, they were, if they're like, gosh, you know, like you said, I'm not really a big fan of coffee. Mm -hmm. um, what would you recommend for them if they came in and said, well, I just want to try something? So we do loose leaf teas. Okay. My favorite tea is Boston Edison, named after that <laughs> historic nice. Detroit neighborhood. Um, we have smoothies. Uh, one of them is called the Palmer Park. Uh, we have frozen lemonade, that's called the six. We have tons of um, Fago. Yeah, I saw yes. that you've got Detroit products. Yes. Uh, tell me about that. Everything Detroit. So we have Better Made Chips. We have Town Club, which you have to be a certain age to remember Same. Town Club. I do, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Town Club we, soda. Yes. Glass bottle. Glass get the, bottle. Get the bottle opener out. Yes. Well, now you don't even need to do that. You can just screw the top right on off. There but they still have the glass bottles. We have Verner's. Um, we even carried the black cherry Verners during the limited edition, the time that they had that, so you can make a Boston cooler if you wanted to. How fun. I'm really aging us, aren't I? I that's okay. <laughs> I, our audience might be in the same, if they're watching, I'm, they might be in the same bracket. Close to our age, okay. <laughs> they, not, then I don't feel so bad. But yes, um, yeah, the better made chips and, you know, things like that. So we don't sell any of the national brands, so mm -hmm. to speak, mm -hmm. because we re I just really wanted to be intentional about uplifting um, hometown products. And you mentioned that um, you work behind the counter, so, you, so you, you do all the things? I'm not the greatest. I will say this, if you ever get me, you're gonna get coffee and conversation, but I also uh -huh. give you a disclaimer. If you don't like it, don't yelp me, just tell me, and depending on if it's close to my barista coming in, I'll ask you to wait. Other than that, <laughs> I'll just try it again. <laughs> but I, I, do do my, um, I do my best. And I just consider this opportunity, um, anybody can learn coffee, I'm living proof. But there's some intangibles um, and it's those things that really matter and I believe that's why uh, Detroit Sip has thrived the way that it has because of the experience. And you said, um, tell me when it started, again, 2014, did you say? So the building was acquired in 2014. Okay. But it, there was a lot of um, crying, tears, sweat, the doors officially opened as a coffee shop um, in 2017. And so you were open and then experienced the pandemic. Yes. How did that affect you and, and the people that came to love Detroit Sip? I'm very cautious about this conversation mm -hmm. because my business was blessed immensely um, through COVID. But we were closed 19 months during that time frame. I never expected it to be that long. Sure. Um, but because the world was on pause, I was able to study the business and work on the business as opposed to being worried about working in the business. And because of that, it enabled me to develop some relationships and learn some things and adjust uh, quite a few things so that when we did reopen, 
um, that we were working smarter, not harder. Um, so it, it did hurt a little bit. I was asked during that time frame, well, why don't you just pivot? You can do curbside, you can do carry out, but that isn't what Detroit SIP is. So I did not want to change that. And I also didn't want to jeopardize anyone over a coffee bean. You know, that area code um, 48221 was one of the hardest hit. And I just wanted to be responsible because making profit over people didn't matter to me. And I'm not saying people that were open. Sure. I don't misunderstand what I'm saying no. in any way. But I was confident that my employees were taken care of because of that, you know, the pandemic emergency funds. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, with them being taken care of and I could responsibly um, do my part, mm -hmm. I just felt like that was what I needed to do for, for my business. And we were all trying to figure things out at that point in time, but I imagine, do you remember reopening and, and the first kind of people that came in, what was that like? What was the response like when people saw the doors were open again? Uh, I was so ner I was more nervous with the relaunch than I was for opening. Because when you open, it's easy. There are no expectations. So people didn't, they just came open-minded and everyone was eager. But the pressure of where had my customers been for 19 months? Mm -hmm. um, had they forgotten about us? Would they want to come back? Are they angry? You know, I just really didn't yeah. know what the response would be. And it was so overwhelmingly supportive. Oh. Um, they came back. Um, some had had children. Oh and I'm gosh. thinking, wow, when did this happen? <laughs> so it really was like a reunion. Mm -hmm. um, and it was better, it, it exceeded my expectations and all that time I spent worrying was wasted energy. Oh, bringing good feelings into the community, I love it, I love mm -hmm. it. Well again, we have to take a quick break, refill again, we'll be right back with more Detroit Sip. Stay tuned. want to see the world. When you pick up a book, I used to read every night to all the younger kids and let your imagination break free. You won't believe how much fun it can be. Let down your <laughs> Experience a world of adventure. <laughs> excitement. <laughs> and endless possibilities. Get tangled up in a good book. Explore new worlds. Read. Visit read.gov today. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. I'm Chris Benson. Welcome back to Celebrate Michigan. I know you got that warm cup of Java, maybe you have a latte. We're here again with Giovanna Fudge talking about Detroit SIP. And um, 
what has it meant to you owning this business? Now, I have to say, um, this is not all of who you are. You have a whole other, um, many other pieces of your life, correct? Correct. Okay, so what kind of pieces do you have out there that go along with this Detroit SIP piece? So the most important piece is I'm a mom. Mm -hmm. So I have a 21-year-old and a 16-year-old, um, two and done. But that's my most <laughs> important job. But I am also um, a practicing attorney. So this is just, this is not your day job then? No. Well, I... I <laughs> well, some days it is. <laughs> yes. Yes, my days blur together. Um, but I, I allocate my 24 hours the best I can. Um, but no, it is not my daytime job. What do your children think about this, this Detroit set? Um, at first it was a chore. And they're like, oh, everything is about the coffee shop because it was so much work to um, just launch it and so they had to do a lot washing chairs and doing everything and now that we've grown none of us are there as much anymore my 16 year old is an active employee there but i don't have to be there any mm -hmm. longer um, mm -hmm. so she she can work there and, and pretty much make every drink that's there uh, very confidently my son is more so like just tell me when the trash needs to be taken out. <laughs> but yet it is truly a family business. And what has it meant to you having this business? Again, you've got these other very vibrant, active parts of your life, and then you've got this too. What mm -hmm. has this meant to you? It's blessed me um, and opened doors that I didn't even know existed. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that I want to be transparent. But to be able to give back to my community, um, the community that I raised my children in, is it feels good to be able to give back. I was always taught to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. So with that, to actively be involved in giving back to the very community that we've taken things from, the resources and, and time, it is really, it's been very, very, very fulfilling. I've met people on the other side of the counter. I didn't even know who I was talking to, you know, but everyone gets the same treatment. When you walk in Detroit, so I, I recall speaking to one of my baristas and she said, did you know who that was? And I said, no, I didn't. At that time, we were all wearing masks. Yeah, so yeah. you have to learn, we have to learn each other by our foreheads and our eye right, color. Right, from here <laughs> up, right? Yes, yes, yes. But um, it didn't really matter. There are mm -hmm. no celebrities, you know, in mm -hmm. that sense. Everyone gets the, the same treatment when they walk inside of that coffee shop. Well, I know you, of course, you serve coffee, you serve different beverages so people can have an experience in the shop, but um, I also saw that people can actually rent out the space to create something. Is that true? That is very true. Even my surprise 40th birthday party was there. They tricked oh. me into walking into the building and were able to surprise me. Um, but yes, we do have a conference room um, that was built with college students in mind so that they could have study groups. Mm -hmm. It's a private room. Um, it is available for rent during business hours. Okay. And then the, the place in and of itself for exclusive use is also available for rent outside of business hours. So usually, I, I, I don't think, it wouldn't matter to me if someone said, here's $1,000 closed down for the day. Because that's not why it's there. It is a coffee shop first and foremost. So when it's not being um, used as a coffee shop, then it's available for rent. And what kind of events have, have people had there? Or what kind of occasions have, have caused that to, to occur? We've had book signings. We've had wedding receptions. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> believe it or not, as I said, birthday parties. Um, we've had comedy shows. We just recently had a painting party this past um, Saturday, that, excuse me, Sunday, that puts you in the mindset of painting with a twist. Oh, how fun. So there are all sorts of things that happen. We do have an event coming up on May 20th, though, um, which is really important to me. We're doing live music and actually a live painting that will be inspired by the music to benefit dom a domestic violence organization. Um, so again, just kind of giving back and, and looking at what's happening in the world. What can we do to try to leave it a little bit better than where, what we got um, when we started? So that is coming up on May 20th. Um, and we'll be doing that from 6 to 9. And you can find it on Eventbrite. And you can follow us on all of our social media to find out what our events are. Because it really is more than just coffee. And so um, tell me that now. So if people wanted to find you, website, what's your website? And then you're on, I'm assuming, Instagram, Facebook, all the things, right? Yes. And I even have a TikTok. We have a TikTok. All right. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm not really active. I got to get better about it. But everything um, from Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok is all Detroit SIP. That's okay. the, the name. And then the website is uh, www.detroitsip.com. 
What do you see for the future of Detroit Zip? I see the neighborhood growing. Um, I just see more of an impact and people coming in and other people's dreams come true in there too, not just mine. Just to watch people come in and, and develop those relationships and those bonds. I just foresee that um, growing and growing. And as you, I'm sure there are women and, um, and others out there who are thinking, gosh, I would love to start a business and, and I just don't even know where to start. What advice would you give to them? Write it down. Um, because dreams can, if they stay in your head, they don't go anywhere oftentimes. Write it down, hold yourself accountable, look at it, start asking yourself on this list that I've made, what am I doing to get there? You know, start with the smallest thing first to trick yourself, right? <laughs> and then once you accomplish that, you say, oh, I did that, now I can move on to number two. But just make sure number one is something pretty minor. And what would you say for folks who have not come down to try Detroit Soap yet or have not crossed your threshold and come in to see you? What, we, what do you want them to know? The only thing missing is you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. Well, Javonna, we are so glad that you told us all about Detroit Soap today. We wish all the best for you. I haven't been there yet, but I need to come down and try it. Okay. And um, I am also encouraging you to try it. You probably have finished your cup of coffee right now. You might as well check it out. Again, that's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for coming to us. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you for keeping up with Celebrate Michigan, where we celebrate all the great people and places and things in the Mitten State. See you next time.